Hey everyone, welcome to the squad. This is the Park Squad Pod, a podcast where four friends catch up and chat about all things Disney, day-to-day life, and more. My name is Brandon, and I am your host for today's episode, and I'm here with the rest of the squad. I'm Heidi. I'm Tommy. And I'm Haley. Welcome to episode 19, which is everything you need to know about D23 from a few first timers. And I know what you're thinking. This has been like, how long have we not done a podcast? It's been a while, but so much has happened and so many things are going on in all like, of our lives. And we're going to share all about that before getting into this whole recap, because we did do D23 back in August for the first time. And we have lots of thoughts and lots to share. And this episode will be all about like the event floor and the process and everything like around the actual like event, not the specific announcements or panels. Mm-hmm. So with that, like out of the way, guys, how's everybody doing? What's going on? It's good. Honestly, it feels like it's been longer than it has, like it only being like Mm mid-September and we literally left Disneyland like a month ago, kind of like this, what, the 17th, 18th. It feels like it's been so much longer. Yeah, well, and it, it feels long, and it has been long since we've recorded as well. So it's definitely getting back into the uh, the groove a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, it, it it yeah, it's felt like it's been a while, but at the same time, it definitely the experience itself is still pretty pretty fresh in my my memory. So I'm excited to get on here and and talk about it. Yeah, we do have some announcements over on this side of the <laughs> podcast. Sure. Yeah, some some big it. ones. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, so if you don't follow our Disney Instagram, mm-hmm. you may not know, but I am pregnant. Woo-hoo! And then to kind of double it, there's two of them. So yeah. we're going to have twins uh, in February. Yeah, we decided to grow exponentially, just go right to four. Uh, yeah, just two. fully commit. Yeah, yeah. So. so we don't know like their genders or anything yet, no. but we actually go this week to find out. So that's... Yeah, maybe next episode we'll announce it live on the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we know that they're going to be fraternal. That's something we do know. Yep. Um, so possibility of literally any of the mixes of yeah, twins. The combinations, yeah. yeah. But that's been occupying a lot of our energy, especially mine yeah. recently. As you can imagine, yeah. But it's, well, been, it's been really exciting, yeah. And I just want to say to everyone out there, Haley did D23 and Disneyland pregnant. (laughs) So give her some props because we were talking about this, that like, how would you do that pregnant? Like and pregnant with like, like twins, like there was multiple people in different queues who were like, like, I couldn't imagine coming to Disneyland pregnant. And it's like this lady here, she is. (laughs) And I was like at the point of pregnancy where like you couldn't tell by looking at me. And so I'm just like crying down Main Street because like my feet hurt so badly. We walked like. (laughs) 10 to 14,000 steps a day, including at D23, I think, which was surprising to me. Yeah, it was yeah. a minimum of like eight miles a day. Yeah. So it was pretty significant. And we'll definitely touch on that more later. But I also realized that the reason that my feet hurt so badly while I was there is because my feet have literally grown already in pregnancy, like almost a whole shoe size. Oh, my wow. gosh. Wow. It's so. a, but yeah, it's a good bit of context, <laughs> right? So as we kind yeah. of describe the physical toll, just know that, you know. <laughs> We have a pregnant individual is yes. able to tough it out and, and make it through the three days. So, you know, kind of just keep that in, in consideration. <laughs> and we have viewpoints coming from a, def- a couple different uh, <laughs> physical ability levels yeah, yeah, here. For sure. <laughs> so you can uh, if you have any questions about being pregnant at Disneyland or going to D23, you can definitely reach out. Yeah, Haley's But you guys girl. have had some big news, too. Yeah. Yeah, you go for it, Heidi, because you got some big news. Yeah. So I finished PA school before we went to Disneyland and D23, and now I'm a working girl. So I'm a PA, been working, been working now for two weeks, which is crazy because, again, I feel like time has like flown since we've come back. Like so much has just happened and so much time has passed. So, yeah, that's what's been going on with me for the most part. And then Brandon. Well, yeah, like I guess for me, the kind of last time that I was recording, I was in a door room, like a like a room in Flamingo Crossings at Disney World. Yep. And now I'm not. I'm back here. And that was just like an awesome time and a whole great experience once again to do that again. And then went like like right from there to Disneyland and D23. And now we're back here like I'm back in school, back at work. And it's kind of getting back into that routine. But this year for school has been very like like a lot so far but good. um yeah, yeah but like good, way, good way which is good so i'm excited to be almost like done i'll be done in like march or april mm-hmm. which is kind of crazy and then it's it's on to other things which is fun but we've yeah, yeah wedding we've season kinda, after that i know <laughs> i was gonna say there's just like like always something yeah something coming. new coming with all of us there's like a new thing every time so i just think it's been fun but that's kind of where we've been so yeah. if anyone was in their car being like where's the new episode <laughs> 
This, yeah. this is we've why. been a little bit preoccupied. Say, we, yeah, we obviously took a longer kind of break than we had originally intended, but at least we came back with a bunch of major right. updates, and it wasn't just like, oh yeah, we, we just know, didn't feel like really, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> been a little bit busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. hence the you know prolonged kind of break between episodes. But we are back, and we promised that we'd be back from D23 with a lot of stuff, and boy, is that true. There'll be some Disneyland stuff and some more D23 stuff, but like I said, this episode will be just kind of focused on like an experience of what it's like to go to D23, but also like the lead up to going, because I feel like like in our kind of like research like before the event, there's not much out there when you try to look up like some tips or different people that have went to the expo giving out opinions or like some tips. So we thought that we could kind of be that for some people, even if one person listens and wants to go and it's like, this is maybe like a, like a little guide to help you because it is like a struggle from when the tickets go on sale, like, like all the way through the whole event, there's a lot to kind of navigate. Yes. And it's like, you're moving at like, like super Mario speed where like, right. cause you like plan the trip. And then by the time like queues open to get tickets to the event is not very long. No. So like there's like you have a lot to do in a short amount of time and they don't make it super easy. Yeah. No. And I think it it requires a lot of the same moving parts as, you know, another sort of type of Disney trip. Like if you're going to the parks and stuff like that, there's still kind of just as much to know and a lot going on. It just feels like there's a lot less resources kind of to, to help you guide your way where with the parks, you know, not only is there Disney kind of sponsored resources or kind of stuff they put out but there's also obviously you know people all over the internet yeah. telling you kind of the best ways to do stuff yeah i felt like when we were looking for it there was a lot of like merch that they sell so like you could see like what people were buying but it's kind of like a, a moot point once you watch that because it's not the same next time you go anyway right. and true. and it's not like you can go like oh i'm gonna go get that because if you don't have a d23 <laughs> ticket like oh well yeah and i feel like there was no like we really tried to look at like for for things of like how do the queues work when should i get in line like what is like the best way to do these and we couldn't find any so bringing our little three days worth of knowledge to you yeah, yeah. we're we're now full-blown experts on d23 which yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> um but i kind of wanted to break it down kind of to start off because i feel like what happens around the time when they like announce the dates is they like release that you can book hotels and that was kind of our first step was that we did do that because you need to secure that you're going to have a place to stay, even if you don't know for sure that like you're able to go to the event. And I think for us, we didn't like actually, I think, kind of like think like, that we could not go to the event yes. or not get tickets. We were just like in our own little bubble thinking, oh, yeah, we'll book the hotel. We'll get the tickets. It'll be like great. But that's not really what happened. No. So we ended up that we booked at the Anaheim Hotel, which was wonderful and great. And that was kind of like the first step that we did. And then it was kind of like a little bit of waiting. Like, I forget the exact kind of time frame. It was like a few months, though, like of waiting before yeah. the tickets went out. Yeah. And I, early, early yeah. Early. Well, and that's like what got it out of the group chat is like yes. we had been talking about going. And then I don't even think Heidi was on the call. I think it was just no, us and Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. And us, yeah. on the call, I like logged in and booked a hotel for 10 days in yeah. Anaheim. <laughs> um, but it's really nice because their cancellation policies, like you can cancel up to like, I don't know, a couple days before, which is really great. Yeah. Um, and also, I think one of the steps that we didn't mention that we did first is become gold members for D23. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that that was like the one where like, oh, if you are a gold member, you get to go, which yes. also isn't the case necessarily. Yeah. So we, we did both of those things. And I think for hotels, which is like, this is kind of one thing maybe to share. Cause I think that people who have never been to like the Disneyland area, like, like, like we have never done. Um, like, I think that there's a lot of hotel options, but I think that people want to stay on property, which is like, obviously kind of a different price point for us though. Like it was perfect to stay off. We were super close. It like really, really worked out. So I think like, as long as you can find something that's like within your price point that you're happy with, I think there are so many options. And I think that we yeah. had a really good one with the Anaheim hotel. Yeah. And even if you stay off property, it's not far at all. At all. It's a, literal walk to get to the park it's a walk to get to the like convention center yep. um if, if that's the right term because yeah. i know there's like the honda yeah. as well um so yep. yeah everything's very close so no stress about that yeah no and there's a ton of hotel options like we we walked by probably 12 hotels in the like 10 minute walk that it takes to get from anaheim hotel to the anaheim convention center i love the anaheim hotel I like can't say enough good things about it. I thought it was like the perfect location for what we were doing. It felt like it was kind of 
equidistant from both sides. I thought the the vibe there was really nice. The they have was, a restaurant, which yeah, is nice. nice enough. Yeah. yeah, it's like attached to like a little pizza place, which was super convenient. Um, I was really pleased. I didn't know really what to expect, and I thought it was great. And it was like you can't get a better price, I don't think, for no, what we got. And we upgraded to like two king beds, which is a little more expensive, and it was still super cheap. Yeah. yeah. So that was our first kind of thing. And then like Haley said, we we did become D23 Gold members. And I think if you're someone who knows nothing about it, I think that you think like on a year where they're doing the event that you're going to be guaranteed to go. And that's kind of what we thought, yeah. but that's not the case. And like essentially this year, which was new for this year, was they were doing like two different types of tickets, one ticket for just the actual show floor, and then one that you could pay to go to the actual big panels, or then you could have that together where it's like both of those in one. And that's new for this year because every other year you could just kind of queue and wait outside overnight and all those things to try to get into those big panels, which I'm so thankful that we didn't have to do yeah. that because that just seems crazy. Well, and I know that people liked it. People who had went to the event before like love that kind of like the thrill of like like no way uh, that's just not for me but also could like, you have imagined me doing that this year no, no. no. And also, we, had, we were already when, up exactly. until like like one in the morning at least and then getting, and then up, we and get getting up, up at four, four. they were long so, like, they were really long days yeah we were essentially already doing that but then having to wait in a line on top of that out in the middle of wherever like no thank you yeah. and just for a chance to get in like if you're yeah. late in that line like if you get up a little bit late Forget about yeah. there's a chance and people were out there literally all night yeah that's wild. not this year because yeah, of that but in the past yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think it just like i think that anaheim like as a city realize it's not super safe it's not conducive to anybody that lives there or is visiting yeah. you just have a bunch of people on the sidewalk all the time yeah there's so much through traffic that if you have like throngs of people gathering at all hours of the night it's just yeah it's kind of a recipe for and disaster. it's a busy road like no, i don't know one a, person like yeah. there's a ton of just like actual like day-to-day -day life going on it's not like a a walt disney world bubble where no everything Anaheim's that's so happening different. is disney related it's just like people going you know, to work living their lives yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so true so they had three different dates that you could buy tickets and the first date was for only gold members so anybody who was a gold member could buy tickets or like like have a chance to buy tickets yeah which which was our first kind of step where we were like i think that it was just me and Haley at that point we're on there right away I and then i think so. that maybe but i think we were on multiple through. devices we were yeah. like i had my phone and my work i ended up having to stay at work that night until right. like six o'clock because i i didn't want to yeah. leave in case we got in yeah. 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 Because I had my computer and my phone. And basically, what happens, like, I think that you guys kind of compared it to like a run Disney yeah. sort super of situation. Yeah. Super. Which was that there's like a little, like a little bar that shows up and it kind of spits you out, like with like a random number in a queue line. And there's this like man walking along the little queue line and then it shows like your progress. And I remember, I think that my number was like 18,000 or something crazy. Yeah. And I remember I looking at I it. There was like a there we had like such a variety because we had yes. four numbers. I think it was like thirteen thousand, eighteen thousand, forty seven thousand, and then I don't know, one other. Yeah, this I was yeah. gonna say the second day I joined, I was like thirty six thousand. Yeah, and we like thought that. for sure, like, oh, we're gold members, like we have to get it. But I also don't think they limited that like you didn't have to show you were a gold member in order to get into the queue. Because like right. I was waiting on my phone and I was waiting yeah. on my computer, which is a bit annoying because out of those 18,000 people or 1799 before you, who knows if they could actually buy tickets because they may not have been gold members once they get into it, which is a little bit frustrating, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we were on there and I remember like looking at my number being like, oh, this seems like a lot of people. And I wonder how many people that the Honda Center fits. And then I think and we that looked I we looked it up and it wasn't like a very high number in comparison to what our numbers were for the queue. So I was then getting nervous because we had come on the internet over and over being like, we're going to D23 and we're it's this not like, Oh, like we're not going to get tickets here today. And we just paid to be gold members. Yeah. And we'll also say, if you don't know what being a gold member is, maybe we can just touch right, on that yeah. quickly. It's essentially like something that you pay for, for the year. You it's, it's like quite a substantial amount of money. I think it's like around a hundred dollars per person. It's one twenty nine per couple. Okay, yeah, so you can couple. have two people and it's $129. Okay, yeah. yeah. You get like a little like reward. Like a welcome gift. Yeah, like a welcome gift every year. And and the intent is that you're essentially paying in to then kind of receive benefits either for the D23 event or like outside. You can other also yeah, yeah. go to other events as well. I just wanted to touch on for that. For sure. Yeah. 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 You so get we... like a quarterly magazine also. So there yeah. is some stuff and like outside of the, yeah. And there's some stuff where like in the park, sometimes there'll be gold yeah. member exclusive things. So like there's pin sets and stuff that you, 
yeah. get a chance to spend more money on it if you're yeah. a gold member. Yeah. Like, I will say, though, that I wouldn't change that we got it because it is like an additional chance. So what I would say, like in terms of people who did do it, I would say to get the gold membership on a year that there is the actual big expo because it is like in our experience from this, how they did it like this year, it's an additional day chance to yeah. get tickets that if you weren't a gold member, you wouldn't have a well, chance at. And even if we didn't try the first day, then we wouldn't have not known and we probably wouldn't have gotten tickets the second day because yeah. we would have just logged on. We wouldn't have been as serious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically we didn't get tickets and we were sad. Some tears were shed. And also, but we to be panic. fair too, on the first day though, like something happened to the website where the it website there, broke yeah. down. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it's like a wider reoccurring theme of yeah. stuff outside of kind of the primary Disney app. And even the Disney app is not great, <laughs> but I guess it was like the secondary and tertiary experiences like a run Disney or D23. The technology is notoriously horrible. Anytime there's a big sign up, it always crashes. People are all over uh, you know, the website formerly known as Twitter complaining about it. So it's definitely like a, a thing that happens all the time. And I don't know why we didn't it can't expect get, it to happen yeah. this time as well, but I thought it was going to be smooth sailing. Well, yeah. I think it's because we never saw anybody and they changed the format this year. Really? So there's, yeah. there was so many more people trying to get entry into things than there were in the past, but we also saw nothing about it before. Yeah. No, like, yeah. So like, like our process after that was we then like, I think that we did go look on like a Reddit or Twitter and stuff to see if what people were saying about it. And, and it was the same. Was there was a the consensus same. that it was not working properly. Mm -hmm. So we then saw them when that ended and the little man went to the end and said, there's no more tickets for today. They said tomorrow's like, like pre-sale day will be for visa card holders because that's who sponsors the event. So then this was our day where we got all the ammunition. We had everybody's device, we yep. had all these things going on. And it was like, we like, this is our chance because they only sell so many tickets for the Honda center, Period. Yeah. which then by day three, there weren't any more Honda center tickets left. Well, and I think that, so there's also different groups of tickets you yes. can buy. Like yeah. there's like a three day, which is like the ultimate fan experience pass or whatever. And that gives you access Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and yeah. then there's one a days yeah yeah just friday just saturday just sunday so i think that second day the four of us were going through like we had a call maybe that the night before the second day like when we yeah. didn't get in and we were like we were ready to spend i, I mean like like sell a kidney like we were ready to like really yeah. give it up and thank goodness heidi is a voice of re <laughs> like financial reason and she's like okay this seems a little bit extreme like you could pay like, and we weren't going like all the way. The people who sat on the floor are paying like twelve hundred dollars a night to Crazy. see the same things just closer. Yeah. Um. But we went through and like wrote down if these tickets are available because I don't know that any three day passes were left. No. So I think we had to go through and figure out, like, prioritize if there's only one day that we can get. What day is it? Because I don't even think we knew that you can buy all three individuals because no, it ended up being the same price, but you just had to pay processing. Yep. And so we like literally had like a written down list of like where we prioritize, what we were willing to spend. Like we had like a trickle down of like, if worse comes to worse, are we going to buy like $300 ticket seats? And we were like, mm, maybe. Well, I, I said, there was, yeah, there was, I, I'd spend 250 to see the movie panel closer. There was, yeah, there was a moment where we were all, yeah, the three of us, I should say, were kind of like, do we just like splurge on 300, like, uh, and it was a point. blind leading the blind the yeah. three of us and Heidi, Thank goodness, like, Heidi right, slow down everyone let's like let's and it was like we went up pretty like it, i'm we pretty did, sure we went jumped. up to like 590 dollars like we yes it was crazy that, like, we, we went from much. being willing to spend like 99 dollars a day to being like we could spend like 395 plus all of the fees a yeah. day it's fine if we're spending 250 why don't we just spend 600 <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then what happened uh, was the that second day we got all our computers we got all our phones we actually got like relatives logging iPad, on yeah we Haley's were mom was on facetiming there, yep everyone was on and then i ended up getting a low number it was like like eight thousand. it was low yeah i think it was three thousand or maybe yeah, yeah it, it was, was really low. low it was it like was we low. felt really good when heidi had that you number maybe it wasn't in the no, like you, said you had like thirty six thousand. yeah i can't take I can't take any of that credit. I was in a movie for like the first 45 minutes oh, of that yeah. contest. So I cannot, that would be stolen valor on my part. The three of them in there, 
family members did all the hard that's work. That's why he was just, willing to shell out the cash. Yeah. He knew he was not going to be able to help. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was going to be predisposed. So yeah, I can't take any credit for that. I was just kind of tagging along. But yeah, that's we so did funny. get lucky. Thank goodness for Heidi all through and through. Her <laughs> old computer. It was, yeah, my old computer. So I log on and then we're, me and Brandon start panicking a little bit. And I said, Kate, no, like we need to calm down. We need to see what's available. But you only have 15 minutes once you log in to pick your tickets in and check thing, yeah. out. Yeah. Like once you have, like once you're through the queue inside. So I'm through the queue inside and you have to also be careful because like Haley said, there's like the two types of tickets you can get the day, like day by day tickets, or you can get the three day tickets. But then there's also tickets that you can get that only give you access to the expo floor, which are actually like more expensive than it's just like the same an price. Individual if, ticket. If not, and yeah. The expo floor is really just spending more money. Yeah. Exactly. Like We definitely ran into some people at the expo floor who people in their group only bought tickets to the Honda center event. And yeah. so they couldn't go like they were yeah. just yeah. so well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So then I log on there and at first we start looking and we start just grabbing tickets like one day ticket. We're like, okay, there's only one day tickets. So there was no three day tickets available, but then I'm like, I feel like, why don't we just like add in like all, all the other like, days, like we just buy individual tickets for like the, for day one, day two, day three. And then Brandon's like, I don't think you can do that. And I'm like, well, I'm going to do it. Like, let's just try. So I, I'm like trying to get all these different tickets, put them all in and you can do that. So just so you know, you can buy individual tickets for like the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And they're not that much more expensive, like compared no, it's to just the processing. It was like Haley thing. said, it's a process. Yeah, fee. just the processing fee. So ended up being that for our tickets, which were like the cheapest tickets that you could get were like $99 press a day. A day. But we were but in the nose bleed. No we bleed. were touching the wall. Like yeah. two yeah, hours. Yeah, we were and yeah. what I'll say too, like, is you have to pick your seats. So we yeah. have to go on. Like, it's like if you like if you bought like a concert ticket or like a like a sports ticket, you'd have to pick your seats. But um, like each gold member, I think also can buy up to eight tickets, can't they? Per, I think like, that per really gold hurt member. the availability of tickets. I yes. think because like we could have bought what thirty six tickets. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, thirty thirty two tickets. tickets. Yeah, 30 Sorry, tickets. yeah, thirty two yeah. tickets. Crazy. We'll blame that on pregnancy brain. Um, but I yeah, so, which it. is just a, like, it's an absurd amount of tickets to buy. Like, obviously right. we're gold members and it would be nice, but I think that people who were all going together were buying eight tickets and right. knowing that they could sell them or give them away. Yeah. And it just really limited the amount of groups that could then buy tickets. Yeah. I kind of get it on both ends because if only one person got through and we had a group of eight, it would have been super nice to be, like, have that yeah. availability, but it is definitely frustrating when you know people are just buying them up on like en masse and selling them on the secondary market. It makes the whole process yeah. a little bit frustrating, but it's kind of yeah. hard to avoid sometimes. Yeah. But regardless, we did it. Heidi yeah. did it. She got Very us all cool. the tickets. Woo. And honestly, like we like stuff. And with the three day pass, you only get one pass that says three days. And then yeah. we got three different passes yeah, every day, like one per day, which was kind of fun. Yeah. It was fun. And also like, I think that if you're worried about spending all this money, like honestly to be way up in the top, wasn't as big of a deal like as i think that like maybe that you'd think it would be because you can still see everything like it's all about like the whole like like atmosphere yeah. like and the vibe and stuff so i think and for us it was it was great it was fine the people usually further back just from experience at the event were Having the ones who were going more crazy yeah. and more excited and screaming and they really engage like all every all part the of the sections they're not just like talking to you know the people at the front it's like you're still getting an awesome experience from yeah so we I got did it. see though, sorry, real quick, okay. that, yeah. that people, so like if you had to wait till the third day to get tickets, your likelihood, like if we had had to wait till the third day instead of the second day when they went on sale, um, your likelihood of getting tickets together, I think is pretty slim because yeah. they've taken those seats. So like we sat next to a girl who was by herself, but she didn't come to the event by herself, but her yeah. friends had to sit somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to just add to that because one of my friends tried to get tickets on that third day. Yep. for her family and the only ones that were left were the actual like expo show floor tickets so i would say like like in short for the tickets i would say on the event year get a d23 gold membership even if you don't get them that day it's one added chance and then hopefully someone in your group has a visa because it, like odds are visa will be the sponsor once again and it doesn't and have to be a disney visa it just exactly. has to be a visa card yeah mm -hmm. so that yeah like and use as many devices as you can and get everybody going and try to get them because it is it is hard to get them and i'm glad that we did and hopefully every year maybe they make improvements like you said tommy to like the it stuff and they try to fix that because like there's no way that it should just kind of crash and then it's just like oh we're like we're done for the day like and we'll, yeah like like i also think tomorrow. if you're like a group of one or two 
Like, I know this kind of contradicts what I was just saying, like with the people being able to buy eight tickets, but I think finding another couple to go with because – Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we all tried at the exact t- same time. Like literally yeah. we did what we always do. We watched seconds and then we logged in and we did the thing. And Heidi was the only one. And like perhaps one of us would have been there, but there would have not been probably all three days left by the time yeah. one yeah. of our numbers got called. So I think that like you're increasing your likelihood and you're not taking advantage. You're still going. So I think that finding another couple instead of just having two people to rely on, finding like two or like four or six more like other people to try and go with is is a good hack yeah and i'll also say that i think it's important like like how we did it where we did look at like a list of like our priorities of like if we could only go for one day which is the day that we'd pick and all those kind of things i think that's important too because you you could get your hopes up that all three will be there and then they're not and then you kind of scramble like you said for 10 to 15 minutes you have to buy tickets what like what are you going to do yeah Yeah, you've got to make your worst case scenario list yeah Yeah. like if there's like nothing left are you still willing to go like I think that that's what we did. Like, are we still willing to go to this? What I don't know which one it was. Mm -hmm. Um, If like that's the only one left and then we had to like prioritize yes or no. Yeah, definitely. Just kind of list out all of the available options um, and kind of the different combinations. And as stuff gets eliminated, then yeah, you get to a point where it's like, all right, like this is the the best option available. I can either do that or just, you know, decide it's not the year. But being prepared in that regard definitely I think made a difference. Yeah, but thankfully... We got tickets yeah. all three days to yeah. the expo and to the convention center, which was awesome. Yes. Yeah. And then kind of like the lead up, like, like to the event is Disney kind of sending you like a lot of emails about like, oh, here's where you can park. Here's about this. Here's like the map of the show floor, like, and all this stuff to know. I think that it is a lot of information though, that maybe kind of is hard to figure out until you're actually there. Like I yeah. feel like the, like the best way, to kind of understand it is to be there because I think that there were some things that weren't clear in some of the emails and stuff. I don't know like if everybody like agrees with that, but I think that it was kind of hard to navigate some stuff until actually doing them like a virtual queue, for example, it was like, how does this work and what's the purpose? And then it's like, like after you do it, you kind of see why that a virtual queue is worth it. Like even if you're not going to go shop and buy all the things, like why is that worth it? And that kind of thing. Yeah. I would say like read through the emails because like oh, yeah, you have they to, have yeah. important information and like some of this stuff they don't really make like the email will be a long email but then it will say like valuable information so like one of them was about like booking um remember like switching the tickets so that we could all yeah, get a to chance transfer to book. tickets yeah to people yeah, and which... we didn't do that and then well the and they sent it late super like late, yeah, yeah super late. they they sent that message like we hadn't gotten the tickets yet so you yeah. don't have the number that's on the back of the tickets. And I think like Heidi, what you were saying, the the emails were so long that they seemed like they were just like generic, like woo, yeah. D23 emails. And yeah. then they would just hide important yeah. information in it. You're right. Which like Disney, if you're listening, like maybe a little bit more concise next time would be or great. In the like title, like yeah. how yeah. to or, or like, like do this. Or also transfer. post this information on your website yeah. when you're sending out a these Disney emails. Blog or even yeah, even like a welcome email upon purchasing passes being like it just has links here's a timeline of stuff like here's kind of how or like what you need to know between now and the actual event here's kind of what to expect here's communication because i think you got the email about the reassignment and then but we didn't because they were booked under you we got the letter the letter letter. was already received after the date that was indicated within the letter like the due date for and we live in the u.s so there's no reason it's not like it went to you in canada and that's the reason because it had to travel internationally they clearly sent letters late beyond yeah. they arrived after the date so i had they had and the date was the on date. the letter yeah they had to push the the due date of reassignment and then they sent an email with the same date so it was yeah. a little bit of a mess in that regard i would say yeah, yeah. so should we go there next yeah yeah to yeah. the little panels yeah yeah so basically what like what kind of happens is that you're able to sign up or put a preference on a website like which we're talking about where like if we would have been able to transfer the tickets then all four of us would have had a chance to put down preferences and have a better chance at getting into these smaller panels so basically like like the panels are broken into there's the big ones at the honda center which is your movies your parks your legends all those things you pay to get a seat for those yes and then these other ones are like included in your like like show floor ticket where it's in like smaller tickets. things which could be like like yours for example was like the cast of Grey's anatomy's there or there's different people that you can meet who voice different characters or different things like that but all of those are like a queue based thing which you can wait for in person and have a chance for or you're guaranteed a spot based on your preferences from the email like list link yeah well and i think that we also didn't really even know that you could queue for them 
No. Not, not I think that when we first went, because we had never been before and we'd never yeah. seen anything, if you didn't get, like the first day, I think our assumption was if you didn't get something for that day, that that's it. Because yeah. it made it seem like that's why you're putting these preferences. Because like, yeah. the man was so why wouldn't it, they just yeah. fill it? Like when people are getting none, spoiler alert, it was us, yeah. we got none. <laughs> 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 If people were getting none of them, why wouldn't you just fill the virtual queue first? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the preference queue. Yeah. yeah. So I think that part was confusing to us. And thankfully, we figured it out by the time Heidi had the one she wanted to go to. Yeah. yeah. And they basically, when like when you did fill out like the list, they had three different categories. One of them was like a talent central thing. Like we saw like at the actual like event where it's that you could meet like, like the voices or directors or things of movies at, like in TV. And then there was other ones that were kind of broken down into like, like giveaways and then like actual, like, like bigger panels. So for us, like, like I put in all this stuff, I put in like our preferences and you could pick like four from each of the categories which I think would be a total then if there's like whatever, there's like a lot of different chances that you have and we got zero of them, which I think. Which you don't even know till the day of. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and like, there's people that got three of them as an individual and we got none as a group, yeah. which I think is a little bit crazy. It is, yeah. and I was laughing because I had thought, oh, like I didn't get an email saying what we got, so maybe they forgot to send it. No, they just didn't send it because we didn't get any. Yeah. yeah. Which, which like you should just send something like yeah, say saying what you, what you got and if yeah. we just got none it should say that I recurring agree. theme right the communication from disney yeah. itself is not you know super super great i would say but then i talked to somebody who was like had gotten them and they said that the the like so there's like reserved space for the people who got these like yeah. virtual seats and they said it was like maybe 10 percent full yeah. Yeah. So like either the people were signing up for things and then not going or they just only filled like 10 percent of the seats. Yeah. But it never really until we like really saw it was clear that like 90 percent of the seats were open. So your chances of queuing up and getting in were pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I think that we we kind of had realized that like a lot of them people like had waited early. So like, like, I guess that we can kind of touch on this and then we'll go back to like, like the shopping virtual queue. Yeah. But basically the one day we got a shopping virtual queue, Heidi wanted to do the panel for like, like the cast of Grey's Anatomy. So she went and did that after we then got into the store, she like left and yeah. went to go do that. And I think that's when it kind of clicked to me, at least kind of what Haley mentioned of the fact that like the majority of people that they're giving cues is not like, it's not a large amount yeah. that they're giving like for for, through these queues so yeah. like i went and i was like pretty i would say i got like a pretty good spot in the queue like there was maybe like 20 people in front of me but there was still a long line oh, and yeah. even by the time we were moving in like people were still going in especially if you're like okay with not sitting in your party like there's individual seats spread throughout so they were like bringing people up right to the front like coming in at the end and saying oh there's one seat like at the front there yeah so i think that like if there is something that you want to do and especially if it's more of like something that has more seating because like some of the things are a little yeah. bit smaller um then you can definitely like get in line and get in like i don't think it would be that challenging but if it you would, prioritize it would just it. need to be your priority to go wait in line and yeah. i think that that's something that like we as first time d23 ers weren't really willing to do is sit for two hours like yeah. there's like there's like floor cues and you literally can sit for a couple hours while you wait yeah yeah but I think that the way we did it for Heidi worked out perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. And I think like we'll we'll touch on virtual queues in a minute, like for the expo. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But it when you get a virtual queue, you can't just it's not just like free access to the show floor. They bring you you get a virtual queue to a like a store and they bring you to the store. But what we did with Heidi is she she came to the store, she checked in, she went in, and then after a little while of being in the store, she went and got in. So she was in line before they let like the gen pop of like yeah. people at yeah. the expo in. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I guess like in terms of that, like I would say to look at the list, if there's anything that you really, really want to do, then prioritize that for us. Like Haley said, there was nothing really like, like except for that one for yeah. you that we all had collectively wanted to prioritize. Like, and maybe in the future, maybe there'll be things that you would want yeah, to go to that giveaway, you know? try to get more free stuff. But yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, and even like, even small stuff, like, like like me and you wanted to meet uh bluey and bingo yeah like and that was also the same where there was a queue but then you could stand in there but they only took so many people it was pretty hard to get it pretty hard and to their get timing pro. was tight tight yes. yeah yeah so you kind of have to have a list of like like i think after day one you kind of have an idea like what do you want to prioritize but mm -hmm. we can kind of touch on that soon but we'll get to the virtual queues because this was a hot 
topic yeah. was that Disney we killed the virtual queue game. We, we crushed it. So you had to get up at 4 a.m. Pacific time to try yeah. to get a virtual queue for the stores. And there were six different stores, right? Six different stores? Yeah, correct. Six. Yeah. Um, yeah, some yeah, of them were just pins. Them. Other ones were merch, like, and kind of broken down into, like, like the Imagineering store. There was, like, the Disney Company store, all those kind of things. And you had to get up. And it's like like if you had to get, like, a Guardians or a Tron, Tiana's, those kind of things. It's harder than that, harder. but yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you you go on the actual Disneyland app was what it was through, right? It was, like, you went yeah, on the Yeah, through D23 the virtual app. queues in Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. Which, Which was interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, and then you had to do that. So all of us had tried and the horror stories of these virtual queues was that people just couldn't get them. And what did and we some do? people were only at the event, like pin people are only at D23 to buy D23 exclusive pins. Oh yeah. And so, and I mean, we have it down. Like it wasn't really luck. I don't think like no, I don't some think of so it well. was, but it's also that like my alarm would go off like five minutes before. So like 3.55, my alarm would go off. And then everybody else would wake up and then we'd all get our phones out and we'd all have our watches out. Or I guess I have my watch out. Yeah, this yeah. was my job, my only job of the whole weekend. <laughs> but the trick is, and if you don't know this from doing other virtual cues, I'll give you it now and you should use it for everything. If you have an Apple watch or whatever watch, turn it to the second hand. And then I gave, what, a 10 second countdown? Yeah. And then as soon as I got to zero for turning four o'clock, you have to enter the queue and we got it. I mean, and we didn't get higher than 15 for all of our virtual queues. Well, I, I yeah. think our highest was 12. Uh, well, except for me. Oh, yeah. I, think that one I think day I got, got 36, I think. I yeah, yeah, but only like for one of them. Which is still quite low. Like, yeah, and that was all me. Like, I was bringing everyone down. I don't have experience <laughs> with the virtual <laughs> pressing because Brandon always does that. So it's my first time. So, but as a first timer, I still got 36. So it's pretty good. Well, and I think so. If you don't get a virtual queue, you're not like completely down and out. Like yeah. no. they ended up opening up the queues, but it was a it was pretty picked over by the time yeah. they would open yeah. the queues yeah. up each day. And the merch that they put out, I think this is something that we didn't know. And no. like what they put out is what they have for the day. Yeah. Yep. Like yeah. they're not really restocking. There's no like back room that they go to throughout the day and put stuff out. Yeah. So like if you get or if you don't get a virtual queue and then you wait for it to open like a normal queue, you might not get what you wanted. Yeah. And that's important to note, because especially from like the stores that are kind of like the most popular, which was like Mickey's of Mickey of Glendale, of Glendale and sold then also, out day one. Yeah. Like and the Imagineering out. store. They, yeah. So you want to get that the first day or know what you want to prioritize and like go because and buy everything that you're going to buy because you probably won't be going back in there again and they probably no. won't have the stuff and it's hard because the if you're there for the pins yeah. you have to have i feel like you have to have a group and you're getting different ones because the pin stores the it's opposite of mickey's of glendale and imagineering they change every day so they're day, yeah. there's friday pin saturday pin sunday pins and they're not the same they'll have some that are left over from each day the next day mm -hmm. but like if you want a certain pin or if you want all of the pins which i've never seen so many people buy the Check entire store's worth it's crazy yeah. you some had to like mark down on this little it looked like you would get like at a sushi restaurant where you like x off what you yeah. want yeah there's an option to just check off everything that's available and they're out here I yeah, mean, yeah. people are dropping fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars per store per day. I'm no stranger yeah. to to buying Disney <laughs> merchandise and seeing people buy Disney merchandise. Some of the stuff that people were walking around with, some of the jarring pure quantities, was absolutely staggering. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> and like, good on them. Like, that's what they're there for. Yeah, I, yeah I but it was just, I, I just don't think that I was ready for like that kind of people no, it dragging was around bags full of like six, dragging six little Ariel dolls. I was like, what do you do? With that? I just, no, it they only couldn't pick them up. Like there was like <laughs> little I ladies, know. like literally like pulling them across yeah, the room. Like it's a yeah. sled. Yeah. It's nuts. yeah. I think what I kind of realized about D23 is everybody goes into D23 with their certain priorities. And I think that merch is a big priority for some people. I think for like us, like as a group, I think all of us got stuff that we were happy with, but didn't, I don't think, like in any capacity, just like like overdo and swipe a card. No, and I don't think stuff. we were ever disappointed by things that we couldn't At all. get. No. no. Yeah. And I think to your point, like having that prioritization is I think you either have to like pick that or not. I think we yeah. were very kind of just like, let's explore, let's see what they have to offer. Yes. We did some stuff that was really cool. We did some stuff where I was like, oh, okay, like, do we need to do that again? <laughs> yeah. No. We kind of just wandered around and did, you know, the few things we definitely really wanted to do, where yeah. I feel like you can either do that or you really kind of narrow into a niche and say, 
you know, here are the shows I want to do. These are my priorities. Anything else is kind of a bonus yeah. or like, here's the merchandise I really want. Anything else is kind of a bonus. It kind of, you know, you have to, but you don't have to, but I think picking a lane is kind of the best way to optimize For your sure. experience because sometimes you can kind of feel like you're just kind of wandering aimlessly, which, yeah. you know, I don't really <laughs> we have a problem with personally, <laughs> yeah. but I you know I, I'm sure some people could show up to the show floor and be like, I didn't really do anything today. I yeah, think we sure. felt like that yeah. towards the end. Like we did. And I think yeah. that you don't want to wait in line. Yeah. I think our priority was the Honda center. I think like sure. if I couldn't go to the expo, I wouldn't have been upset. Like it, it was a bummer just because like you're there for all of D 23. So obviously I want to get to experience all of it, but going to the three panels at the Honda center was my top priority. I, I would have paid the ticket price for just the panels alone and been me too. Content. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, I think, yeah, I think as a group, like we, we more prioritize like the experience of being there. Like, I think we did we a good job did, yeah. like of going to all the stores because we got all the cues. We got to like see everything and like we had to pick and choose what we wanted to do. But like we weren't like going heavy in on like, OK, our priority is just getting merch. Our priority is just getting something else. Like we were kind of like more of the vibes. Like we were yeah, just like we were. we're here for the vibes. Yeah. Um, But I did want to say one thing about the pin store because I don't think that I knew this because I didn't go to the one pin store where you guys went in is that I didn't know that for the pin store like. All you do is you get in line and you are buying pins. There's nothing to like, there are pins to look at briefly, but not really. Yeah, you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want. They give you a piece of paper and all you do is check off the pins that yeah, you're it's buying. It's just a menu. Yeah, like it's not really a store. So that's just something to keep in mind because I know for me, like I liked going to the stores to like to browse, to browse and see like, is there anything that maybe will like catch my eye? But like at the pin store, you're not doing that. You're, if, if, if you want to go no, to the pin store, you're buying pins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's business, it. Yeah. And I was like, I'll say that a uh, Disney pins blog was good about like, like he put out like all of the different stuff each day. So I think that, like there are things that you can see that yeah. day that if you're like unsure what they have, they'll actually show pictures. But like, I think what was nice about it was all the stores had like different stuff, which I think like is good in a way, but also hard because if you want like, like D23 specific stuff, like I have this hat on, it's like, that was at like, like the Disney company store only. And that's like the only place. So I think you kind of do have to look and they did put out like a little guide with like some merch kind of pictures. But I think that to get the cues and to go to the stores, I think is a priority for us. And I think should be for like a lot of people, because not only like, can you look at the stuff, but like Haley said with, with Heidi's thing was you can go in and if you want to browse for a second and leave, then you can go and actually go to like get in a queue somewhere. Whereas if you don't do the store, you're waiting in the line with everybody else to just get into the actual expo when we've already gotten into the expo with that low virtual queue number for yeah, the store. Which maybe we can talk about a little bit more next about yeah. like the yeah. line and the timing things. That's yeah, what I was going to touch on next. It. So yeah, perfect. Um, like Heidi said, like we, we got numbers 36 and lower for all of our queues which for the most part was the first wave. So like for the most part, and I think, what time did it open? Eight? I want to uh, And then we got there at seven. We got there at seven, the doors open at eight. Yeah. So the first day we're like, do we get there? At like, do we just get a virtual queue and then stay up and go? Like, we didn't really know like how it worked, but then it felt like with a virtual queue. So like the first day we kind of rolled the dice on it, but now that we've rolled the dice, you don't have to. Yeah. Um, if you have a virtual queue, you don't need to get there six hours ahead. No, you probably need to get there an hour ahead because the queue does get pretty long and you do have to wait in like there's like a queue to get into the queues. I was going to say you have to wait in line to get inside. Once yes. you're inside, the virtual queue will let you kind of not skip the line, but take your place in line. Yeah. And we kind of <laughs> got around waiting since we showed up a little bit later when we went inside and the first day we got bounced around like a ping pong ball. Yeah. Like we were like, OK, we're number 10. And they're like, okay, well, you have to go in there anyway. So we go in, there's like a giant waiting room. Yeah. So there's like queue, there's virtual queues, whatever. And then there's like a big generic virtual queue, like, or just like a holding room. Yeah. Maybe it's no virtual it's queue. General queue. It's the general yeah, so queue. Like, yeah. If, if you don't, didn't get a virtual queue, but you want to go to the expo floor, you go and it is, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people standing oh, in there yeah. and it's like yeah they've been there clearly they've been there since it opened yeah. which was like what five five a.m four four a.m five thirty i think you could actually start to queue so is, and that was just to get in to the regular queue so like the first day we go and we can see that like there's people already waiting at like the door so you wait at like your expo door but it's closed and then they open it up and they walk you to your store yeah 
But so they told us we had to go in the room. So then we go in the room, but our like group had already been called. So then we tell somebody else our group had already been called. They're like, oh, we have to go. And so we go back to the people that told us to go into the room. And it's just, it's hard because there are Disney cast members, but then there is Volunteer. Honda Center volunteers and there's Honda Center employees. I think there's also just like third party. Third party, employees. I was going to say. Like, yeah, for like security event. kind yeah, of. For the event itself, yeah. And so like nobody really knows what they're supposed to be doing. But if you can find somebody with a headset, they generally know what they're supposed to be doing. And so we ended up just getting walked straight to the door like of the expo room where you just wait for 30-ish minutes until 8 a.m., and so that ended up being really nice that we didn't have to sit there for hours and hours and hours. The most we waited was like 40 minutes. Yeah. So I yeah. think that that's worth it getting there early because I think that like holding area for the, the general queues is so long. Super unappealing. Yeah. yeah. To wait in. And it goes like out the door, like it goes out the door because that's, we didn't have to experience it really at all like we did it we did the first day but then we kind of heard from other people like what the experience is if you waited a long time if you don't have a virtual queue and an early virtual queue actually i should say because if you have a virtual queue that's like a hundred you're gonna have to go wait in that generic line because your a hundredth is not going to be called before like no, the other thing before opens up. yeah but if you have an early one you will get to go in early and you'll kind of get to butt the not butt the line but like tommy said take your place in line if not you're waiting in that long line that might go out the door which then has to all like slowly let all those individual people in. Cause I want to say that maybe even like the general door is opened at nine. Cause yeah, I, I felt I that we, we got we in were there, there by ourselves earlier right. by ourselves at like, like eight o'clock waiting to then get into the stores. And yep. then I think they actually started the expo at nine. So we were in the actual building before anybody else yep. with these virtual queues. And like you guys said, like they, like they hold you in front of like whatever it is, like A, B, C, or D for like the actual doors. And then you go in, yep. but that's like the way to do it. Like, like, in my and, opinion. Yeah. And then by the end, we knew the system. So we just like always had like, like at the end, we had like group two. So we oh, would yeah. just walk crazy. up. We already just would go to the person and we would just say, we're group two. We've already been called and we'd go find. Yeah. Like, we would kind of just not them. lie, but like seem Tell like them. we knew what we were doing. Like we were just like, and we, we were, we weren't like tricking anyone. Our group was already out there. Yeah. But instead of going through like the people who don't really know, telling you where to go, going back. We would just say, oh, we were already told to go this way because we knew that's where we were supposed to go. Yeah. yeah. But I actually, Brandon, I, I think it opened at eight because do you remember the first day when we're walking to the pin store and a horde of grown adults are sprinting down? I think that was the general queue. But yeah, I, remember right. when they were running? Yeah. It was definitely a me, delay. I think we got let in, try to see. Let in a little. I, maybe, it, yeah. Because I don't know if those were people in virtual queues running. That's crazy. Maybe it was the... Yeah. The virtual queue start because I think we waited for about an hour in the virtual queue and then would get let in each day. And I thought that there was a delay between when we got in and when they got in, but you might be right. It might have. I been just don't because no, I mean it was thirty minutes. It was crazy to watch the first day, and I didn't yeah, see it nuts. after the yeah, first it was like, day. It was like running of the bulls. So yeah. yeah, I mean, there's like forty five year old men in khakis and tivas sprinting down, <laughs> and like there was like. <laughs> There's like poor cast members are standing there, like oh, putting yeah. their hands out like a human wall, Stop. telling them to walk and yeah. they would walk until they pass them, maybe a step and then continue to run, Crazy. which I think you should be kicked out. Be um, that wild. <laughs> That's illegal. No, I know. So the event like floor was open nine to seven. Mm. So I don't know what that was. I guess those are people I, running to a virtual I think queue they were in line for a little bit. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But it, yeah, it was, it was crazy. There was a lot of times it was just pure madness yeah. and it was kind of crazy. So that's like our, like our virtual queue experience. So in my opinion, they are worth it. Like, yes. yeah, they wake up at four. Mandatory. Don't, Tim, don't, yeah. don't wake up at four, wake up at three fifty five <laughs> yeah. and yeah. have countdown until four yeah. or you're not going to get it. Even if you're not interested in the store, just like pop in, take a yeah. lap around and then leave and then do whatever. It you gets you out of any waiting, having yeah. a virtual. Yeah. I think that our opinion on how like easy breezy the morning of the expo was, would have been very different had we yes. not had virtual cues. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And I was going to say that, um, like, like our good buddy, Tim tracker, who we ran into so many times, he made a little TikTok of what it's like to get a virtual queue. And it's like, just wake up, tap the button and then go back to bed. And that was yeah. kind of our little, our yeah. little thing. But yeah, we also don't know Tim tracker personally. I feel like we do. Him. He yeah. doesn't know us. We, <laughs> well, you said really our mean, good buddy. Well, 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 because I'm joking because, out, because right. we saw Tim tracker more in three days than I ever have on a Disney trip ever. I mean. Yeah. even more than i've seen on the internet except for recently now they've <laughs> yeah. been all over tiktok he's but he's everywhere yeah like every time i feel like every time we turned around we saw yeah. him in line for the bus there he is beside us 
Because mm-hmm. yeah. in the store looking yeah. up pins, yeah. there he is. He the was first getting, couple of times it was so exciting, and then we're just like, oh yeah, there's Tim again. Hey, yeah. <laughs> he knew how to get the virtual queue too because he was in the same groups as us. He so. was. Yeah. Well, of course, if he didn't, there would be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> the system <laughs> makes broken. Um, so it, kinda, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it. Definitely, like we got like a full two and a half hours ba- more of sleep. Yeah after yeah. every virtual queue you can't yeah. recommend it enough no yeah, for sure um so kind of after moving on from that then let's kind of touch on like the actual show floor because yeah. this is what like the whole event is is this whole show floor for the whole day um and basically how this is is it's kind of broken down into like a b c and d and it's this big open area like like i guess if you've been to comic-con or any convention it's probably like the same thing but this is all just disney stuff and some things are like obviously stores that you can buy stuff other things are like like the panel virtual queue slash things that we like, like signed up for, but didn't get any. And then there are things that you can just wait in line for that have like an experience. Like for example, like the ESPN picture, or there was like, like other little things like that, where you can just kind of walk up, scan your badge and do. And I think that there was a lot of stuff that you could mm-hmm. do and see like every Disney brand was there. There was like Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, all those things. Like, and then just like, like other like third party things like that I guess. Loungefly, like, Roosevelt's like yeah. they all had shop stores there. What's the card yeah. name? Lorcana. Yeah. Lorcana oh, yeah. was huge yeah. this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I think like in terms of that with, with our thought process was day one was kind of like, obviously take it all in. But I think looking back, it was that we then thought that the expo like like floor would get less busy as the expo went on. And it was the opposite. I think by Sunday, it was like packed and stuff that we wanted to do like that, like the pin pursuit, for example, which was getting all those pins. We then didn't finish because it was just impossible to do. No, the, the queues would be full. Yeah, full. Like we would yeah. go after we left a store to go to try to go like the Hulu had like an experience. Yeah. And so we'd try to go because it was like super cool. Like they had like the bear and like all of this other like Shogun. The they had like a yeah, bunch of FX stuff. One. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. FX. And then so it was like cool inside. It's not just like a walkthrough and you get the pin. Like there is stuff to do, but we never got to experience it Yeah. because like we and I would have waited for the for the FX one. I would have waited probably an hour. You didn't even have the opportunity to wait. Yeah, like you had yeah. to wait like two hours to get into the Abbott Elementary Carnival, and I'm just like <laughs> not, not willing to do that for a pin, you know. And like we were talking about when we were there, it's cool that there's something to do, and it's definitely to take because if those weren't there and people weren't waiting two hours, the show yeah. floor would have been like you couldn't have moved through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we don't I don't care about the Abbott Elementary Carnival, but I started this pin pursuit and I'd yeah. like to finish it and then yeah. we couldn't. Yeah. yeah. Which which for those who don't know what that is, you can kind of maybe if you want oh, to yeah. explain so the, the pin pursuit. Pin pursuit was actually really fun. It was and fun it's, and cool. It's fun because it's something that you can of course you paid, so it's like it's not free, but it is free. Like it feels like a free thing. It feels that's like an a add-on. free thing. You yeah. get um a lanyard and then there is 10 pins. I think that you can go around quite a few um, and you try to go around to these different areas um, that will make you do something. So you'll either have to like go through and, and dance to a song and they'll film you (laughs) a drama for the rest of your life. (laughs) Yeah. You could either do that, but after you do that and are forced to do that, you get a pin for it and you get to put it on your lanyard and the pins were like really cute and fun and they're Disney. Nice. Yeah. They're nice. Yeah. You can either have them as a souvenir. You could trade them with people like you could trade them at the parks. Um, And so we, started that on day one and i think day one we were like we oh this is, like done. we got like five i think on the first and day i road. think that we had a false sense of security day one because we yeah. were flying through these queues day we one were. and yeah. if i could go back and tell day one selves anything it would be just finish it out yeah, yeah. just yeah. do all 10 day one and then you don't have to worry about it but i think we also started late because we didn't really know what the pin pursuit was yeah no yeah we didn't know no. So I don't think we started until like a couple hours into our day. I think we went and got in line for our D23 pin and then yeah. then did it. Um, yeah. But it would have been cool to be able to do all of them. And I definitely think if they do something like that next time, that you should prioritize doing it first. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Or like, like doing the long, like you'll kind of see that there's ones that certain things take a little bit longer because I think one of them was like that family channel, like little like uh, Mickey head. Like, or, like yeah. Disney Channel. Disney Channel, sorry. Canadian. Oh, Family, family Channel. Channel. I was like, that's definitely <laughs> relevant. I'm like, I know I've watched Everyone family out there is like for. Family Channel. What are they sorry, talking about? Disney. I'm just Channel. gonna let you roll with it. Yeah. Disney Haley Channel, Mickey like, Head. Yeah. Every individual person has to do that. So like each person is, Which is taking cool, like but five minutes to do that. Well, then you have a line of how many other people like that's and gonna I, add up. I do think if you're like if you don't want to do it, like if you it's giving you anxiety, you can yeah, opt out. Yeah. Oh, but for sure. Ninety percent of the people want to do it, so that's why it takes long. But like yeah. 
Yeah. Like that glam bot that we joke about now, like the man before us was definitely like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And they're just like, okay. And then gave him his stuff. Yeah. You're, where yeah, you're we, did we did it. <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a little right in here. Like, like in between us in oh the, or like, like in between the two little screens, I'll, I'll skip yeah, or just post it to the Instagram and they can yeah, go yeah, it on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, it'll be easier. Yeah. But so basically yeah. like a treat. It's like a prize. It's like yeah. A reward. Yeah. Um, like, I just think that it was cool how they did those things. And I think like, maybe we can kind of each touch on one thing from the show floor that we like loved, I think would be cool because there was lots there. And there were some things that I wanted to do that we didn't get to do, like, like the Marvel one, like the TVA, but that mm -hmm. was just like so long. It was crazy. And but again, I, think, I feel like you should, we should have done it day one. For sure. Right. We didn't know. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like, I don't know, like if anyone has one on the top of their head, like a, like a thing that they loved from the show floor, that was like an awesome thing. If there's anything that we want to touch on or if it's. I, I, can do a, I can do a couple. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have two, like I said, the first one, um, I'll breeze past because I think is funny, but there was a big ESPN section and I was kind of chuckling to myself as I interrupted our Disney week uh, with like SEC on ABC and, you know, the <laughs> SEC championship trophy and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty funny uh, yeah. just because it is so juxtaposed with like all the other booths that are there. But, you know, for someone who is into college football, I thought it was it was a cool, nice little uh, like setup. And we got to take some pictures and that was it was quick. And there wasn't, as you can imagine, there weren't a ton of people in there. And we got um, a poster so quick and we got a yeah. poster. Um, so that was fun. And then I also thought the Lucasfilm booth was very cool. Didn't spend a ton of time there because it was a lot of queuing and like kind of we touched on it wasn't we weren't willing or kind of in the mindset to wait in lines a lot of the time. Um, but I walked by a couple of times and there were some really cool photo ops where they kind of used it as like a volume effect, uh, which is how they like shoot Mandalorian and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it looks like you're on a real set in the picture. Um, and then they also had Manny Jacinto, who is a. Uh, What's his name? Jason from yeah, the good place. From the good yeah, place. From Jason. The, so the Acolyte. And he was doing a signing and a QA. And I got to kind of like peek my head over and look at that. So I thought that was cool. Um, but it was always like kind of cool to look at as you walked by to see like what background was up and kind of what they had going on the screen. Um, so I thought that was like a nice little cornerstone of the the booths, the show floor. That's one that I wish I had known actually what it was day right. one, because I would have done it. Like I think like you got to like literally like you're walking and it's looking like you're moving. Like I think yeah. like like it looked like you were on the set. Like that was really cool. And I wish I had known that that's what it was. I didn't think the schedule was super helpful because I looked at the schedule to try and see what was going on on the last day. And it just says like Lucas film experience or something like that. But it didn't give any more like insight into whether it was going to be like a like a signing and meet and greet or something like that, whether it's just a photo op. So I didn't think and maybe again. I just missed where it was actually kind of clarified but it kind of seemed like a toss up where, you know, there's going to be something star Wars related at 2 PM. You got to wait 90 minutes. Who knows if it's, you know, a guy from a show you may or may not have watched or a photo op, which I don't know. Like I said, maybe I missed out on that, but I definitely no, I think that. communication again strikes yeah. again. So I think yeah. that wasn't great. Um, I have two one, I think so. And it might be one that you guys are going to say too. the avatar one was really cool. But since we have avatar, I think it was like a little less, yeah um impressive but it had like the same smells it was really immersive yeah and so i think that if you're somebody who lives on the west coast and have never seen avatar like pandora and you're getting pandora soon i think it like makes it really exciting so i thought that that one was mm -hmm. good and then we did murders in the building it was like the hulu walkthrough which the line was incredibly long for no reason it took us like 15 seconds to walk through and it took every other individual four minutes to walk through. And it was just, it was so shocking. Yeah. So, but they had like the whole house set up and it was like little spoilers to this new season that came out a couple weeks ago. Um, so that was cool. I think that it was like, there's a lot of stuff that, and I think that that's probably like what the TVA thing was like, that right. we just didn't yeah. get to see it, that it kind of made you feel like you were in the set, which I think was cool. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sad about that one because now we we, we love that show it's so now. Good. Oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, that show yeah. is. At least so you guys good. have we're, the pin from it. Yeah, that's true. We're, we're on exciting. we're on season three, yeah. and I'm like I'm so obsessed. It yeah, is so, it's good. so good. Um, do you want to go for yours? Yeah, yeah I have mine. It. So I'll just echo one of Haley's as the Avatar. As a Avatar person, I was really excited, and I think that this was more of like like some of the things that you could do were a little bit more like bigger or more to them, and so I think this was definitely one that had like a little bit more. Just yeah, like, like it was it. immersion. Like yeah. it was, you're immersed. It was like you had to take your time walking through it. There was like 
photo ops. There's like um, a little banshee at the end. Little banshee at the end. Yeah, that was super cool. So I really like that. Um, the other one that I wanted to say was the Imagineering That's one, I which say, I knew yeah. you were probably going to say that one. That one was really cool because they showed um, like stuff coming to the parks. That was where after they announced certain things that were coming to the park, you could go the following day and like see the things that were um, announced that were coming, like either like little sets that they're kind of showing like how they'll look or different concepts. Um, and all the people in there were like actual Imagineers working. So if you're like interested in that, then That's it was so super cool. cool to be able like to like Lenny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah poor lenny who we wanted to meet but Could've. we were we were like yeah, right there busy. Yeah, yeah everybody else was was, was taking popular. our thunder from lenny um but you could like talk to all of them and ask them questions and they were all super like engaged and nice yeah. that was cool um oh and then this one we didn't really like do but like we walked by it a few times and i thought it was cool because they had like um a disney broadway section yeah where at certain times of the day like either broadway stars would come out and like talk but they also had um, one thing that I thought was cool, which we didn't like stop to see, but I kind of saw it was we went and saw like Frozen on Broadway and they had the person or one of the people I'm sure who plays Sven, which is like the whole like contraption for him to get in there is like, like walks on walks all fours on his, the whole like, show. Yeah. On his like hands and like knees or legs. And like they like get him dressed up in that contraption. You kind of see how it like um, gets put on and stuff. And they have a lot of like um different costumes and stuff and that's kind of on like a big stage that's kind of easy to watch like you don't have to queue you just kind yeah. of show up so i thought that was cool as well yeah like i think to kind of just like like tie everything in together i think that they did have something for everybody in like a disney fandom or like a disney like adjacent like you said hulu all those kind of things i think they really did have something for like like everybody and it was all like new stuff like or new things coming so my kind of like like one thing that i'll just add is i loved like the pixar disney animation area where they had like the big like like the maui moana like thing and all those kind of things like of like the zootopia yeah like all the yeah, new where we movies at. yeah where <laughs> that we got we at. <laughs> but i just think that it's cool how they have those kind of things but like like for me by far the imagineering one was so awesome they they had that little thing which is like the new technology that like looks like a treadmill but it's not but it's like these little like panels that like, like hexagonal thing, like, panels. yeah yeah and it's like insane and they just like like had it there that you can stand there and watch this person like on a chair Move going around. back and forth on these little panels on the floor and like the actual people there who like are making that technology which i think is is so cool and then yeah like you said like on the one day we noticed some doors that said like like don't open till whatever day and mm -hmm. it was after the parks panel then they opened up and you could see like the monsters inc thing and like the lion king like like little model which i thought was so cool which then that day it was so busy like yeah. on that well, sunday i think like so tommy touched on espn i think imagineering was one of my favorites as well i don't know why they gave espn half of a show floor and they gave right. imagineering this tiny and it was yeah. broken up by walls yeah i don't think like that was the best planned space for it, especially because they knew they were announcing something that yeah. you could only see there. Like yeah. they said at the parks panel, like in order to see the, the what's it called ride vehicle, you have to go to the Imagineering panel yeah. tomorrow or the Imagineering booth tomorrow and see it. And so they had to close the line. Like, thankfully we went in the morning and we were going to go back. Well, you couldn't go back. You couldn't go back. So like, it didn't really make sense. Or they have like that big, area near the d23 like gold member lounge like there's just so many spaces that are really kind of unused that i feel like imagineering is like a huge part of why people like disney mm -hmm. and so i wish that i could have seen it like on a bigger scale and taken time but it was like if you get claustrophobic or don't like small spaces with a lot of people the imagineering booth like was it for you but it was so cool yeah on sunday it was it was definitely bad it was packed yeah yeah. Even when we went and they like nothing new was there or nothing new was there. There was no, still Lenny was. and his little hexagonal panels. Well, but yeah, the panels were on one side and then kind of like the right drones, which are it, cool. Yeah, the little uh, like the little oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? So people Very are cool. kind of just back to back looking at yeah. stuff because both sides are really cool. So yeah, I definitely agree. And the droids are interacting with you. So you yeah. have to give them space. So like they're yeah. taking up like a third of the walkway. If you're trying to look at those, you're on that side. If you're trying to look at those, you're on one side. So it was like, I just wish that there was a more open space that you could have like actually spent some time and enjoyed the the Imagineering group agree. more. I agree. Yeah. That's fair, yeah. Um, like, and I guess kind of like the last little point on the expo floor was I thought it was very grand and like like really nice to look at though. Like when you walk in those doors for the first time, like it is 
like like a Disney event. Like it's it's very clear that it is because there's just like a lot of Disney there, which is cool. Yeah. Like I think that they do a good job to make it look appealing and stuff. And there's like a lot of things, and there are stores where like you don't have to get a uh, like a yeah. queue, like like lounge fly and all those kind of things. Like you said, like like there are certain things on certain days where they like they do have other things. So I think the whole show floor like is a cool thing. But I think for us, if we probably did it again, you would flip and do more things that first day to yeah. get them done so that you don't have to feel like you didn't get to do some stuff on Sunday. But I feel like that all of us like, like walked away feeling good. I, like I had no kind of like, like regrets, regrets. or sad yeah. things about that. Yeah. 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 Like we, especially on the last day, I think we just like came together and said like, okay, what do we actually want to do? And like, would anyone kind of like be sad if we don't do something and everyone mm -hmm. kind of just thought about it and was like, you know, like the, three hours of my time is not worth this experience. Like, yeah, it'd be cool. But not today yep. and i think we all just like kind of came to that agreement and it was also like fun that we had so many people going because like if there was a situation where like someone wanted to do something it was easy to just like step away and go do that and not feel like you know the whole party had to be a part of that or like, we're good travel partners i, was gonna say, I think we as yeah. like a group of four do a really good job because like sometimes like Heidi and I want to do something or me and Brandon yeah. want to do something maybe less adventurous than Tom and Heidi <laughs> and then we can do that and I don't think that anybody ever gets like their feelings hurt no, no. so no. I think like if you're traveling there with somebody that like isn't your significant other or your family you need to come up with like a like you have to yeah. kind of set the standards like yeah. the boundaries yeah like these are the things that I'm prioritizing as must do's these are the things you are if they overlap we'll go together if they don't we'll go separately or you're not going to get everything done yeah, yeah. um yeah. The other thing I wanted to touch on, and it's super quick just before we wrap anything up, yeah. um, you can't bring food. I know that that was like something that oh, yeah. when we were going, like we heard a lot of trash talk about the food at D23, yeah. where the food is not great, but it's not terrible. Like it was no. totally suitable for one meal per day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, it was expensive. The, the meal that we got from the food trucks was... Yeah, it's like okay. 20 bucks, which awesome. is a lot a for lot. like some some mediocre Chinese food, but yeah. it's it's edible. Like it's not yeah. like we were like, yeah. oh, this is terrible. Yeah. And there's like a ton of options. Like it's there, yeah. the choice is there. It's just a matter of, you know. And you could always leave. Like you're in the middle of downtown Anaheim, like you're right outside the park. You could yeah. you could leave for an hour and go to downtown Disney, no problem. Yep. We should have yep. done that and gotten a giant cheese stick. Yep. But well, I think the um, one day we did that. We did that the one yeah, day. The yeah, the last day. Yeah. yeah. But we missed the giant cheese stick. Yeah. <laughs> and there's but a I also, nearby too. Yeah. So like I know that like previous to this year, I think you could bring your own snacks and people told you to do that because the food isn't notoriously good. Um, you could not bring your own snacks. They like bag checked and if you had them, you had to throw them away. Yep. Um, so the food is fine. The coffee is bad. Bad. Yeah. I was gonna they, say coffee's they terrible. had a they we didn't even get it because it was that those like we weird like day. in house. I got it the one day within the convention center. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, and it, it was, was so strange expensive. because Joffrey's had a booth oh, at D twenty three, but all they were doing was selling books. It was like a bookstore, yeah. and then giving you samples of their what I don't Sor even remember. Sorcerer brew, but actually sorcerer <laughs> blend. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorcerer blend, but I renamed it sorcerer's brew. <laughs> But you could get like, and you had to like scan your badge. So like, really, you were only supposed to get it once. We went every day. <laughs> yeah. But there was no was Joffrey's, bad? which was so bizarre to me that it would be so easy to oh, have. Joffrey's. Shaky like, Jamaikis. Thank you. Shaky yeah. Jamaikis. Like, even canned, they sell them. We would have bought them for $7 a pop. Oh, yeah. Easy. <laughs> we would have bought three a day. Yeah. Well, because so I was definitely say, try and caffeinate before, like at your yeah. hotel, or well, like have a plan to leave and get a coffee. Yeah, yeah. Because I bought the mediocre coffee, and I it was like a seven dollar like instant regret. Like <laughs> I would have spent that was the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> instant regret. Like I just think, yeah, like like that was on my list. Like which any of these we we can take it or leave it. But like like we we touched on all this with the food. Also for seating, there's not really places to sit. Like you have to sit, no, on, you the have ground, to sit on the ground. Which yeah. I think is kind of not there's like five benches great. all in the same mm, area. There is that cafeteria area. We just didn't go. That's what I was gonna say. There oh. is yeah, one area we just didn't go. They but I think them. throughout kind yeah, of the whole like like inside the actual like expo show. Yeah, floor. like if you're just like walking around, you want to take a minute, like but then also no shame, just sit yourself on oh, the ground. Yeah, we yeah no, we ate every meal on the floor. In there. <laughs> the people that were queuing were sitting on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah like people were yeah. sitting on the floor. It, those conventions like that, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. No. Half the people are dressed up like characters. They're not going to sitting correct. on the floor. Yeah. 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 No, I had my shoes off at one point. Yeah. I was sit. I wasn't near anyone, but they were off. 
Um, and then my my last little point was that there are some famous people there, which is cool. If you do want to see those people, sometimes it's like Kevin Feige who runs Marvel's just like walking around, and it's like, like I don't think that we ever got. We those saw him on Instagram. Yeah, we saw Tim, that one person. Tim Tracker was ours. <laughs> that was yeah, our, yeah. our, our, our whale. Yeah. We walked by that one, Josh tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah we did. Oh yeah, we did Josh see Josh tomorrow. upstairs. Yeah. Um, for again, there are, there are tons of people who dress up in cosplay, which is cool. Like, like yeah. there's a lot of those. And they so look I think really cool. if you want to take pictures with people, like or see things, there are characters that you can meet there. Like like the little Disney Junior thing had yeah. characters, but there's also tons of cosplay people, which is really cool. Yeah, and they do pop. If you're someone who's in the cosplay, like you it's can worth have going. three days worth of fun, just like like there's meetups, there's tons of people doing stuff. Yeah. I'm sure there's like cool. a an unwritten code where you can link up with people with cosplay well, they have, you respect and no, there's take written codes. Them. And there is, yeah. Well, I know there's like like meetups and events <laughs> like and stuff like that. Actual yeah. events. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that that's like part of D23 that we didn't yeah. even touch and we can't touch on. Like you'll have to find somebody else for that. Yeah. yeah. Because we that's just bag. not part. Yeah. I would do it. I would 100% do it. But I think that like people like plan like this is like their Super Bowl. Like right. they plan two yeah. years for this. Like they use like they combine every Comic Con that they've been to costumes and they're incredible. Yeah. Like they, they don't look like they've made these costumes the at cosplay home. People had more fun than anybody else. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And so there's events like if you're into that, like there is there's meetups and there's events and you get interviewed by D23 and like there's all of these different mm -hmm. things that you can go do. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that, like you said, like if that's your thing, you could spend the whole day just doing cosplay stuff and not waiting in line for lounge fly bags or whatever. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And be prepared if you come with a cool costume, every second we'll person is going to stop you, you yeah. for a photo. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like, and then I guess to kind of tie it all in, which we can kind of maybe like do this, I guess we can give like a rating out of 10 for our like, like, like experience. And would you go again to D23 after going for the first time? Anybody want to start okay. us off? I don't want to start. I have to think about it for one second. I can go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm going to rate it like a 9 out of 10. I had a really great time. There were things that could have been improved, but I think, again, we were just, like, riding high on that, like, like, like the Disney magic vibe. Like, and I would go again. Like, I thought that the whole experience and doing it, like, like with you guys and, like, the panels, which we'll touch on next episode, like, our thoughts, but... Like, I just think that it was a really, really great time. I loved it so much. And I, like, miss it because it was so great. Like, I had a really great time. Um, and it was a really cool thing that I've always wanted to do but have never done. Like, and I think to kind of, like, like knock it off my list was awesome. And I would for sure go again. Mm -hmm. really? I have mine. Um, so I think that, like, mine is kind of dependent. So yeah. the panels for me were a 10 out of 10. I would do them again. I would go every year. I would go yeah. every time yeah. they had an announcement to the panels. I think it was super cool. You saw a lot of famous people. I cried at Billy Crystal, which I was not expecting. Sure like, we'll talk about that next week a little bit. <laughs> there more, is yeah. like a lot going on. So those were a 10 out of 10. I think D23 as an isolated event for me was also a 9 out of 10. Um, I think now going for the second time, like you would have more experience and you know what to do. I wouldn't pair it with six park days and being pregnant ever again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. So I think that I think that I like would have walked away with like less pain if I, we had done three park days because i don't think i realized how much walking d23 is it's all it is yeah it's we walking know. and waiting and standing i think mm -hmm. we stood for i don't know 13 hours a day and then went to a panel and sat for two and then stood again to get back on the bus so i think yeah. that it was more standing than i thought but i think that as an isolated event it was like a nine nine and a half like i loved it yeah yeah i i'm pretty much in agreement i think the panels are 10 like it was like totally in my bag even the legends which i think we were a little bit down on coming into it i was like i had a ton of fun it was awesome it was yeah a fun disney award show it was a blast i loved the panels and i think yeah d23 is kind of like a overall experience right there with Haley. i think it's like a nine nine and a half like i really enjoyed it overall i think the show floor itself i think i don't know i'd have closer to like a, a seven and i think there's elements that might just like don't necessarily aren't conducive with kind of what i'm looking to do in general like i said yeah. i think if i was like a cosplay person it would be awesome. I did. That's just not kind of what I am into currently. Um, so I do think having the experience that we had, I would, you know, might change some of the stuff we do just because like, even like we talked about kind of expecting crowds to go down and they didn't necessarily, you know, kind of using the, the first day to really kind of wander around and kind of take it all in and then maybe focusing or narrowing the focus of the second couple of days could really maximize some of that time. 
Yeah. Um, but I still had a ton of fun. I think even the the show floor, which is probably the weakest of the of the two elements, still like a seven and a half. I still had a ton of fun. I never went home um, after the the show floor. I was like, oh, that stunk. I was bored. Like it was still yeah. really cool. I do want to add one thing to mine. Yeah. I think that we chose a great year to go. I don't know I that if we had gone two years prior, my like sentiments would have been the same. Yeah. Um, I think that we went for like a mic drop D23, for which sure. is kind of why we chose to go and what we were planning. So I think that definitely skews my opinion of it a little bit higher perhaps than other years. So I don't know that I would go next year, but like next time I feel like there's like they're due for more upgrades again, I would definitely go. Yeah, that's fair. I don't really know. On on instinct, I wanted to say eight out of ten, but I don't really know why. I think that like after it, I felt like ten out of ten and everything. But I think just like reflecting back, I'm gonna say eight out of ten because like there are things that I feel like can be improved. And like I think that if I were to go again now, knowing so much more, then it's like like you said, I'd make those changes and stuff. But like. Yeah. The experience has the potential to be 10 out of 10 if there was like a few little changes that we could like do or like, you know, do these things first or like finish the pin like pursuit and all That's this fair. stuff. So I guess I'm ranking it more on like my own personal experience. But I think that the event is like, like has the potential to be 10 out of 10. If you're like a Disney person you and you it. like Disney, like I definitely think that this should be like on your bucket list because it's just one of those things where it feels like you're really like, it feels like you're almost like in like like a club where like you're going and you're like we are yeah <laughs> like you're gonna go and you get to like see all these things and you get and it's like different people say oh you can stream it but it's like the environment like to be there and to see that excitement and to be like a part of it where they say something and you are hearing it and you're right in that room with them and everyone's going like crazy and you're like i can't believe this like there's just nothing like it i don't think and then even again to go to the show floor and then the next day like see all the things that they just announced the day before like it it really is super cool and it feels like I don't know. It just feels like once in a lifetime opportunity, even though you could go like every two years, it just feels like something that I think everyone should like. If you're a Disney lover, you should put it on your list. You should make it a priority. You should go. Yeah. I think you can go every two years, but it's different every two years. Yeah, it is. And nothing is ever the same. Like there's different people, different yeah. announcements, different stuff to do. Exactly. So, and you're like just around like-minded people. Like yeah. you get to be your little Disney freak with your little Disney adults. Like you all can to, <laughs> like, you're all riding the same wave. Like, exactly. Nobody like it's like going to Disney World is different. There's people there who have different feelings about Disney. Yeah. Some are just there because their kids want to go. Some yeah. are just there because they have kids and they want to go. And so like you're just kind of around like people who want to be doing and hearing the same thing. Yeah, it's so specific that everyone is pretty much on the same page. Yeah. 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 And I just think again to kind of end it here is that if you want to go, then you should go because I think that we're big advocates for like doing things like mm -hmm. and making it happen. And I think this was an awesome thing that we made happen, which yeah, we yeah. never would have thought that we would have done. Like, and we did do it, which was so cool. So Next I know that Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real, Disney <laughs> Asia. Let's do it. Um, so for us, I think our next episode will be all of our reactions and thoughts to all of the panels, which I know now by this time is kind of older news, but we were there like in the room and we want to share like our thoughts on them and kind of do like a fun little chat about all the stuff because there are some crazy big things, as you all already know, that have yep. been announced. And we just want to give our thoughts on it, which will be so fun. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and you're happy that we're back. I know we're glad to be back. The absence was because of certain things. We had some things going on. All right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're so glad to be back. We hope that you enjoyed and we'll see you all for the next one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.